Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alice Chibombo Ekanya, and I'm now standing as a member of the Wikimedia, Wikimedia Community User Group Uganda. And I would like to share with you the journey of Wikisource in Uganda and what we've done so far. But I'm also going to use the time to talk a lot about things that nobody has asked me. So if you ask my sisters and my parents the dress that I am wearing, they will say that this is Abusuti. But if you ask somebody from Alvin's generation or my generation, they will say that this is a Gomesi. And this is the formal dress that women in Uganda from my tribe actually wear. This is the half version. I do not have to wear the full sash. And it is called Gomesi because it was brought into society by a tailor from Goa called Gomez. And the local version of his name is Gomesi. But now we move on to Wiki, so we are not here about clothes. So for those from Africa and particularly East Africa, these roadside vendors are a very, very common sight. And at times they start by selling donuts. And then the next day, you know, they are selling sweet potatoes in addition to uh, potatoes, in addition to fish and everything. And in Luganda, we say, meaning you always have to have your hand on life moving so that things around you can move. Next step, next slide. So because you have to have your hand on everything and want everything around you to move. We have very many projects in the Wikimedia Foundation and Wikipedia, Wikidata and Wikicommons were well established among our community. The, the, as you may know, those projects are increasingly hostile environments for a very many editors from Africa and we needed to explore our opportunities in other Wikimedia Foundation projects that we thought we had the expertise for, and we landed on Wikisource. And we also have a collection of experienced and curious and very enthusiastic editors. And then, because this was under GLAM, we noticed that we had only been catering to librarians. We did not know where the archivists were and the curators. So we wanted something within the Wikimedia Foundation projects to bring in the archivists and um, include them, have a project that offers responsibility for the kind of professional training that they have. So we had a conversation with a gentleman from uh, the Wikimedia Foundation called Sadib Gill, and he had been talking about it. And out of curiosity, we tried it. So last year on the 3rd of December, we held our first Wikisource, uh, let me call it Transcribathon, if I might put it that way. And we had over 30 people in attendance. And along the journey, after that particular day, there are so many things that we discovered, so many things that came into perspective. But the first thing that happened is everybody had some complaints about the dashboard. And even when we opened something on the dashboard, we only discovered that it could only record people's names, but not contributions to Wikisource. So we got to learn a new tool that is the Indic Wikisource contest tool. That is actually the link to it. And it is a tool used to evaluate the proofreading and validation of a content of a, of, of a contest because that is what happens in Wikisource. They upload the scanned material and there is something that you have to transcribe and proofread. And that tool can actually register that. And these were the administrator. Let's go back. And these were other administrators of that contest. It ran... It uh, recorded contributions between the 6th of December and the 26th of January. Next slide. So along the way also, we noticed that the books we were transcribing were um, books that were from outside Uganda and in a very old version of English. So you had to be a reader to be interested. And the things that we decided to work on were actually not appealing. People were putting in the work, but only because they were interested that this is a new project and we needed to have content that resonated with us and that could be appealing and could be read and understood by the people that were editing it. So we were able to upload some Luganda text to commons to be transcribed later. And this is the old prayer book 
even my grandmother didn't use it. It's called and I think it also has psalms. So for those who go to church, you will know that. And then the other one is a book about Islam. I think that it is um and that is the kind of work that we upload in uh uh, later on, a volunteer offered two books that were in the copyright domain for us to be able to, for us to be able to upload them onto Wikimedia Commons. Then we realized that it needed a specific scanner and specific skills, and we were stuck at that point. But luckily, there's um, there's a my brain has frozen. Okay, so there's a university called Chambogo University. It started out as a technical school, but now it has a very big technical library. And the university librarian is a Wikimedian. And I reached out to her and she said, listen, I'm not going to be editing anytime soon, but you have my results at your disposal. You want to know how the digitization process happens, how selection happens, and how you can get equipment? Please, you're welcome to my digitization unit and that's how we had our first glam on tour go back we had our first glam on tour to the chambogo university library digitization unit so we put that professional relationship to use and we also had a customized wiki source editing guide and this was done by volunteers next so what does the future hold for us? Uh, currently, we have a few volunteers engaged in the Wikilabs Manuscripts Online Training. It's a six-month course that launched in the, at the end of October. And we still have the editor who has offered us the two books, the two Luganda books for scan scanning and transcription. But it has also made us think of the opportunities that we have have to engage in their expertise. If they're not going to be editing, then they can tell us the things that go into preservation of documents, copyright things, and educating us. And we are also happy to say that for the longest time, we had struggled with creating relationships with university libraries, but now that relationship has been established. We are going to have a two-day GLAM conference for GLAM in Uganda, and uh, we will be hosted by the same university. There are resources that are at our disposal. Thank you. So while you were uh, talking about the books that were released, mm -hmm. you made mention of copyright domains and public domains. So I just wanted to correct that. No, the, the people actually, the people we were talking to, the archivists that we talked to, are actually well versed with that. And that is how we are using their expertise. Even when it comes to selection, you ask and say, listen, is this out there? We were also able to use some material from the Internet Archive, but that's how we are using the expertise of the archivists in our midst. Yeah. Okay. 